Welcome back to the arena, ladies and gentlemen. And usually we have the moral maze on a Monday. I think it has to do with alliteration or something like that. But I think Rob Ford got in the way of some uh, story. So we're doing the moral maze today. And I'm very happy to have in the studio with me Alyssa Golub of Campaign Life Coalition based here in Toronto. How are you doing, Alyssa? Hi, nice to see you. <laughs> Great. I guess right off the hopper, and I think mm -hmm. we have a clip, Dan Savage... Um, it's really almost pornographic, I think, some of his viewpoints mm -hmm. and downright violent. Mm -hmm. uh, he is getting paid $24,000 to speak at the University of Oregon. And folks, just for a, an example of the kind of stuff this guy talks about, check out this clip. You know, I'm, I'm pro-choice. I believe that women should have the right to control their bodies. Sometimes in my darker moments, I'm anti-choice. I think abortion should be mandatory for about 30 years. <laughs> Yeah, really, a mandatory abortion. He also, at um, some of the subjects he's going to talk about is, well, actually, I can't say on uh, primetime TV what he'll do. Uh, one thing I can talk about, he advocates people have sex in gorilla suits. Um, golly, Alyssa, have you ever had a compulsion to have sex in a gorilla suit? <laughs> I can't say that I have, no. Uh, yeah, it's it's absolutely astounding. I mean, even, you know, Paul Ryan or Rick Santorum charged 20000 to go speak, and this guy who's talking about kinks and fetishes and gorilla suits and forced abortion is getting 24000 from student funds at the University of Oregon. So I just, I, like, if I was a student there, I would be completely enraged, absolutely. What is the educational uh, component here? And, and I mean, I, the other thing I find astounding in terms of the double standard mm -hmm. is that this man, Savage, has a history of obscene and violent utterings against Christians and conservatives. Mm -hmm. Substitute Christian and conservative for Muslim, black, mm -hmm. homosexual, what have you. He's banned from campus. Yeah, he, he said that um, all, he wishes that all Republicans were effing dead. Um, he yeah. said that gay kids get beat because of religion. He called Pope Benedict uh, a homosexual uh, and much worse things. Those are just like skimming the surface. And yet he gets this airtime. He gets, uh, you know, a university forum all to launch um, an iPhone or a smartphone app um, called Sex Positive, which talks about these kinks and talks about the gorilla suit and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's absolutely astounding. Like he is, he's completely vulgar. I don't understand how anyone could listen to anything that comes out of his mouth. It's interesting to me that you know he, he advocates for forced abortion. Yeah. Says that he's so pro-choice that he's anti-choice. Yet I'm, I'm wondering if he is so concerned about overpopulation, is he willing to sacrifice himself? Mm. Oh, the good, good point. <laughs> um, and a good segue into another story that's mm -hmm. uh, caught your eye, Alyssa. Uh, China is talking about relaxing their one-child policy. Although there's some fine print, I understand. Mm -hmm. I mean, this this story made headlines, and of course, everyone knows about the one-child policy. Right now, as it stands, um, there's a forced one-child policy in China. But if one of this, if both spouses were only children, then they were allowed to have a second child. Now they relaxed the one-child policy ever so slightly to say that even <laughs> that if one spouse was an only child and the other spouse came from one of two, then you could have a second child. Why this element of only child uh, qualifications in the first place, Liz? Well, I think they're worried about um, the economy, I think, first and foremost, and, okay. uh, and secondly, about, you know, overpopulation, especially in China. But it's interesting because, you know, they, they interviewed with somebody who worked for the media in China, and he said he is eligible to have a second child, but he can't afford it um, because of, you know, skyrocketing housing prices and, and school tuition there. So he says he can't afford it. So I'm not sure if you know if it's even if you're even going to see a, a, you know any rise in population in China and, and also there there is an element of a demographic crisis in China too because um far more girls are aborted Absolutely. we know that mm -hmm. and that is skewing things i mean there are, are there are a lot of very lonely bachelors in china right now 37 million estimated 37 million yeah. so this idea of the beach boy song two girls for every guy that's a fantasy in china isn't it and, and it's you know it's it's it gives rise to human trafficking to sex selective abortion and i mean just some of the stories that come out of the one child policy are absolutely abominable like women being photographed with their ch aborted child next to them oh um you know being dragged out of their houses and the mobiles having forced abortions on a regular basis um you know just tearing apart the family structure tearing apart women's rights and uh it's it's atrocious so even though it made headlines that it's relaxing the policy it's really not doing much well as bad as it is it could be even worse imagine if dan savage was in charge of china <laughs> it'd be a zero child policy Alyssa Golub, thank you so much for dropping by thank you for having me great